ruckus. So, we have been discussing Christ's ministry and specifically his role as our high priest and the process of atonement. So, the last two lessons we talked about the process of atonement and what that means for our future. But it's kind of heavy. So, we talked about Christ being our high priest, Christ making a one time atonement for us, the possibility that sin would not be able to be forgiven for a time period. That's a lot of stuff. It's kind of heavy. So how do we know that this is actually accurate and something that we will actually see play out in time? Get your pen, get your pad, get your Bibles, and we're about to jump into that topic right now. I am his humble servant, and this is Straight Word, the Bible study series where we get straight into biblical topics without a lot of the unnecessary fluff and distraction. We are in our Christ ministry series, and we're discussing how Christ's life itself was a ministry. And we talked about many roles that he played. Of course, he was our sacrifice. Of course, the ministry of his life was important to us because he had to live a sinless, blameless life in order to be that sacrifice. We also discuss how Christ is now our high priest and how that presents a new uh, uh, ministry as far as what will happen for the atonement of our sins. Well, as we discussed these things last week in the lesson before last week, uh, we were able to see some examples from the scripture, but we also want to go back and kind of look into that and confirm that what we were looking at is true. So one way that we can see that is through a lot of the scriptures of prophecy in the Bible. Specifically, we're going to look, take a look at Daniel and Daniel chapter 9. In Daniel 9, um, we want to read the whole chapter when you have time, of course. I always suggest that because it helps to give you a greater understanding of what we're discussing. But we're going to take a look at a few passages. Remember, our discussion led us to understanding that Christ being our high priest is going to make the final atonement for our sins. That process relates to the process of the high priest of Israel making a atonement for the nation of Israel. He would use two goats to do so. One would be the sacrificial goat, one the scapegoat. So we discuss how this is going to play out even in the end times. We even looked at Revelation where it shows that Satan will be released for a time in the wilderness. So he's going to play the scapegoat. Well, let's take a look at Daniel chapter 9 and, and see what revelation was given to Daniel. And keep in mind, this revelation was so like overwhelming even to Daniel when he realized it. That it made him sit for a while and he was, he was actually in uh, mourning for about two or three weeks. So let's take a look and see what he realized. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 9. And we're going to look at verses 24 uh, through 27. There it reads. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make a reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and 
the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be the flood, and unto the end of the war of desolations are determined. Verse 27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of the abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So what is going on here? I know that this passage is, is very wordy and, and it has some things going on that we need to discuss to get an understanding of. So let's take a look and break it down. First, we see in 24, it confirms what we have been discussing the past two lessons. It lets us know that um, there's going to be a process. And, and here, Daniel was shown it's going to be a 70-week process. 70 weeks, of course, in prophecy is determined a period of time, but it may not specifically be our same physical weeks. Remember how we discussed time and, and um prophecy in our prophecy lesson if you haven't watched that go take a look at that as well but anyway we're discussing this this 70 week process that Daniel was revealed of but look at what it says in 24 is going to consist of in that process it says it's going to finish the transgression remember transgression means like to to do something that's outside of God's law so this process is going to finish the transgression. It's going to make an end of sins. It's going to be the process for reconciliation of our iniquities. And also it's going to bring an everlasting righteousness and seal the prophecy that has been made. So this is all of the things we discussed of the final atonement process that Christ is going to do for us. So these things are going hand in hand with what we already discussed. I'm sorry, it was one other one. It said also, and to anoint the most holy. The most holy. And we know who our most holy, who our high priest is. So this time period is going to be set aside for these things, for that atonement process that we discussed. So this is confirmation of what we were looking at our last two lessons. Look at verse number 26, though. It, it shows us something else that helps to confirm what we've been discussing previously. Verse 26 says, And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Why would the Messiah be cut off? And what does that mean that the Messiah is cut off? Remember what Christ have already done as far as his ministry. We discuss how he became that sacrificial animal the same way the priest would have a sacrificial goat and a scapegoat. Where Christ became that sacrificial animal for us to be a uh, redemption for, for us and, and take the, the uh, blame of our sins off of us, right? So also in verse 26, it says that the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city. And what else? The sanctuary. Remember the sanctuary is where all of this take place. Specifically the, the holy place inside of the sanctuary. Is where the sacrificing takes place. So now we're saying that the sanctuary or the place where, where sacrifices can happen to, to cleanse us of our sin, that's going to be destroyed. If it's destroyed, that means what? We won't have that type of, of uh, place for sacrifice any longer from this point on, right? Unless something new is built. But look at what number 27 says. Verse 27 says, They shall cause... And he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. What does that mean? The sacrifice, we know what a sacrifice is. What is the oblation? 
An oblation is a thing presented or offered to God. Oftentimes being a sacrifice, being a burnt offering. So this is showing us that it's confirming what we discussed earlier. There's going to be a period of time where there is no sacrifice being made for our sins any longer. There's nothing that it will be able to be presented to God to cover us. So we can go back and now answer that question in verse number 26. What does it mean for the Messiah to be cut off? Now we're getting it. The Messiah was our sacrifice. So now there's a time period where the sacrifice of the Messiah is cut off. All of the sacrifice, all of the, the moment to repent and the process of atonement is no longer. Okay, well, we looked at Daniel chapter 9 and it shows us, you know, maybe we're making these connections between, you know, the atonement process that the high priest did and what Christ is going to do in the end time. Or maybe we're just connecting dots that are not there. What if this is a prophecy that Daniel spoke of that already happened? It's not really going to happen in the end times. How do we know this is not talking about something that already taken place? Well, let's cross-reference and check that out. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 24. We'll look at verses 14 through 16. There it reads, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So what do we see from this passage? It's confirming to us that these things that Daniel are speaking about it's going to happen in the end times. So it can't be that Daniel was speaking about something that already has taken place. This is Jesus discussing to the disciples what the end is going to look like and what things they should look forward to. So we already see there in Matthew 24 verse 14. It lets us know that these signs are going to happen and then the end shall come. Then directly following that in verse 15, it says, when you see the abomination of desolation that Daniel talked about, stand in the holy place. So it's letting us know that the things that Daniel are talking about is happening in the end days. But what is the instruction we see there? Stand in the holy place. Now let's think about what we have been discussing in this series about the high priest, the, the, the um, method of atonement that the high priest would take for Israel, and where he did that. Remember, only the priest is allowed in the holy place, the high priest in the holy of holies. Why is that so? Because the priest was burdened with uh, making sure that he was cleansed and he was properly presented and able to stand in a place that held the presence of God. That's even why during the atonement day, the priest would sacrifice uh, the blood of the sacrificial animal and sprinkle it over the altar for him before he took his role in, in sacrificing for Israel because he had to be clean before he stepped into the holy place. So think about what it's telling us here in verse number 15. When you shall therefore see the abomination of desolations. Spoken of by Daniel. Remember Daniel spoke of the, the sanctuary being destroyed. He spoke of the Messiah being cut off. He spoke of oblation or sacrifice to God being done away with. So when we see these things, what does it tell us to do? 
Stand in the holy place. How can we stand in the holy place? Just like the high priest of Israel had to make sure that he was cleansed, that, that he had no filth, no dirt, no sin among him when he entered into the holy place. It's letting us know that we have to be in a condition of being cleansed once this happens. We have to make sure there is no sin, no spots, no blemishes so that we can be in the presence of God once this occurs. And it says stand in a holy place. So if we're standing, if we're staying in the holy place, which this is a spiritual holy place, it's not going to be in a physical uh, sanctuary, but it's a spiritual holy place. If we're standing and staying there, we have to stay clean. We have to continue to be cleansed and we have to continue to be spotless and without sin once all of this occurs. That's why last week we discussed during that after this final atonement that our high priest is going to do, there's no longer going to be room to, to repent for sin. So you have to be in a cleansed state during that process. This is connecting the dots for us. So how do we know, how do we know that, okay, the atonement process is going to happen, but it also says something is going to be happening on the other end. And remember last week, we discussed that Satan is going to be released and for a period, he is going to roam in the wilderness or on the earth. Just as the scapegoat was released by the high priest of Israel with all of the blame of the sins of the nation of Israel. Well, how can we connect the dot and make sure that we're looking at this accurately when it comes to that part? Let's go back to Revelation. We're going to check out some more prophecy to help us get an understanding and connect those dots. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 13, and we're going to look at verse 4. Through seven. There it reads, And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. The power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So remember, at Revelation, it all ready made the connection that the dragon there is a talking about that old serpent or Satan. So this is letting us know that there is going to be a period where Satan does have the room to roam and even rule over the world. But what is that being done for? And now that we have the understanding of the atonement process, it helps us look at scriptures like this without fear or without, you know, being overwhelmed about a time period where Satan is roaming free. Because now we know God's plan and why God is doing this. Satan is that scapegoat, so he's let out to roam. But remember, before the scapegoat was released, the high priest had to lay his hand on that goat confess the sins of, of all of Israel and release him. So Christ, our sacrificial lamb, our sacrificial animal, he died and his blood atoned for our sins. But now the punishment of our sins has to continue to be fulfilled some way. It has to be taken out some way. So Satan is released not that he can have a party and, and roam free and, and take power and control over us. Satan is released because now, just as that scapegoat was released for Israel, 
a scapegoat for all our sins is being released. So instead of the penalty of our sins falling upon us, now they're going to fall upon Satan during his destruction. Man, so isn't this a great revelation and, and just very helpful in understanding prophecy and what's going to happen without having to look at it in fear? Now that we understand God's plan, it helps us to be able to read these things and, and not be so overwhelmed. The same way Daniel was overwhelmed when he was re, uh, revealed these things in Daniel chapter 9. Well, I'm definitely glad that the Holy Spirit could lead us to this type of information and help us gain this understanding because it's very necessary because we're getting closer and closer to that end time. So we have to be prepared for that atonement and prepare for that period where we have to keep ourselves clean in order to stand in the holy place. Well, let's say a quick prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to continue our study. We thank you for how the Holy Spirit just continues to lead and guide us in what you have for us to study and, and gives us revelation that we may have never been opened up to before. We thank you for, in this time, you being concerned and, and loving us enough to share the truth with us, Father. We like to ask that you continue to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, our every move, our every, our every footstep, dear Father, that we stay inside of your will, because in a time like this, that is so, so important, and, and we don't want to step outside of your will and be out of line. At a, at a moment where it would be detrimental. The Father, allow us to continue to get the correct revelation that you have of your word and apply it to our lives on a daily basis. Let us be a light that shines to other men so that we can help other men step inside of your will as well. And we ask this not that we get the honor and glory, but that you get all the glory out of our lives. This we ask and pray in Yahshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. It is done. Well, I'm glad that we could have this study, y'all. Um, this is such a, a big topic and something I've been studying for a while, but I even had to get a certain level of release to be able to do a lesson on this topic. And I'm glad that God allowed that and that he's showing us things that, like I said, we may have never gotten the revelation of, but at this moment in time, he is releasing that to us now. But we're going to start a new series next week. And don't worry, it's still going to be full of revelation. And it's still going to be full of that word. But until next week, always remember, study the word for yourself so you can get the straight word with no chase.